Cinderella. Read the story along with me and find out what happens. You will know when it's time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a young girl named Cinderella. When she was a child, her mother died. Her father found a new wife who had two daughters the same age as Cinderella. But after Cinderella's father died, the stepmother was very cold and cruel to Cinderella. The kind girl was forced to work as a servant in her own house. Still, Cinderella was always cheerful. Sure that one day her dreams of happiness would come true, she started each day with a song. Cinderella was always busy cooking, cleaning, and serving her stepmother, Lady Tremaine, and her stepsisters, Drizella and Anastasia. One day, while Cinderella was doing her chores, she heard a knock at the door. Open in the name of the king! A man shouted. It was the king's messenger. He handed Cinderella a letter. The stepmother was giving Anastasia and Drizella music lessons. Cinderella knocked at the door. "I warned you never to interrupt," barked Lady Tremaine. Then Cinderella showed her the letter. It was an invitation to a royal ball for the prince. By royal command, every eligible maiden is to attend. The stepmother read. That means I can go," Cinderella cried happily. "You!" Anastasia shrieked. "I see no reason why you can't go to the ball," the stepmother said in a silky voice. "If you get all your work done, and if you can find something suitable to wear." "Oh, I will," promised Cinderella, hurrying away. "Do you realize what you just said?" A horrified Drizella asked her mother, but Lady Tremaine had a plan. Of course, I said, "If," answered the evil woman. Oh, if Drizella repeated. Anastasia giggled. Cinderella went up to her room in the attic and found an old dress in a trunk. <laughs> It was my mother's. She told her animal friends as she twirled around. "It's a little old-fashioned," admitted Cinderella, "but I can fix that." She took out a book and found a picture of another dress. She had just started making plans when she heard a shrill cry, "Cinderella!" Oh, "My dress will just have to wait," she said patiently. "I'm coming," she called as she headed down the stairs. Now let me see," Cinderella's stepmother said. "There's the large carpet in the main hall. Clean it. Oh yes, and the tapestries and the draperies. But I just finished," Cinderella said. "Do them again," ordered the cruel woman. The stepmother planned to keep Cinderella so busy that she would never have time to work on a dress for the ball. The plan worked. Lady Tremaine and her two daughters kept Cinderella so busy that the sweet girl didn't have a moment to work on her dress. Poor Cinderella, a mouse named Jack said to his new friend Gus. Work, work, work! She'll never get her dress done. Hey, we can do it! Exclaimed one of the mice. We can fix the dress for Cinderella. All the animals thought it was a wonderful idea. Jack and Gus scurried to find some new trimmings for the dress. Anastasia and Drizella were throwing things away. I wouldn't be caught dead in that sash, Anastasia said, while Drizella kicked aside her old beads. So the two mice scooped up the discarded items. Jack and Gus had to sneak past Lucifer the cat. It wasn't easy, but they did it. The other mice were proud of Jack and Gus. All of the animals began to work on Cinderella's dress. The mice and the birds measured and cut and sewed. They all sang as they worked. They couldn't wait to surprise their friend Cinderella. But would they finish in time? Soon it was eight o'clock. The carriage is here," 
Cinderella told her stepmother. "Why, Cinderella, you're not ready," said her stepmother, sounding surprised. "Aren't you going, child?" "No, I'm not going." Cinderella hadn't had a chance to work on her dress all day. Hmm. There will be other balls," her stepmother told her smugly, knowing she had kept Cinderella from going to this one. Cinderella told herself the ball would be frightfully dull, but in her heart she knew it would be completely wonderful. Slowly, Cinderella walked up the stairs to her attic room. When she entered her room, she couldn't believe her eyes. Surprise! Surprise! Shouted the mice and birds. Happy birthday! Cried a confused Gus. The mice and birds had finished her dress. She could now go to the ball. Oh, how can I ever? Oh, thank you so much! The delighted girl cried. Cinderella dressed quickly and raced down the stairs, calling, "Wait, please, wait for me!" Lady Tremaine was shocked. Now she would have to let Cinderella go to the ball, or would she? Those beads—they give it just the right touch, don't you think so, Drizella? The stepmother observed. Drizella saw that Cinderella was wearing her old beads. <gasps> Thief! Drizella cried. Then Anastasia noticed her old sash. The two girls tore at Cinderella's dress. By the time they were finished, the dress was in rags, and Cinderella was in tears. Good night, the stepmother said, as she left for the ball with her horrible daughters. Cinderella ran outside to the garden. Her animal friends felt terrible, but there was nothing they could do to help their poor Cinderella. It seemed as if her dreams would never come true. <laughs> It's just no use. There's nothing left to believe in. Cinderella sobbed. Nothing? Asked a voice. Now you don't mean that. If you'd lost all your faith, I couldn't be here. And here I am. It was Cinderella's fairy godmother, and she was going to help Cinderella go to the ball. With a wave of her wand and a few magic words, a pumpkin became an elegant coach. Four mice were changed into four horses. A horse was turned into a coachman, and Bruno the dog became the footman. The fairy godmother was pleased. Well, hop in, my dear. We can't waste time. But Cinderella wasn't quite ready. Don't you think my dress? She began. The fairy godmother looked at Cinderella. Oh, goodness, you can't go to the ball in that. She waved her wand one last time, and Cinderella was wearing a beautiful ball gown. Cinderella loved her dress. And look, glass slippers! Why, it's like a dream, a beautiful dream come true. Then the fairy godmother told her that, like all dreams, this one would end. The spell would be broken at midnight. Cinderella was very happy as she rode to the ball, but at the castle, the king was not so happy. His son, the prince, hadn't fallen in love yet. The grand duke told the king that falling in love at the ball would be like a fairy tale, and it would never happen. Just then. Cinderella arrived at the ball. When the prince saw her, he asked her to dance. The king and the grand duke were amazed as they watched the couple dance. It looked as if the prince was falling in love with Cinderella. Drizella and Anastasia were very jealous of the new girl. Their mother thought there was something familiar about her, though. Cinderella didn't notice them. She didn't know that the handsome man she was dancing with was the prince, but she did know she was falling in love. The couple went for a walk. They laughed and talked. Time seemed to fly by, 
and all too soon, Cinderella noticed it was almost midnight. I have to go, she apologized, and she hurried away. The prince didn't even know her name. Wait, he called, but Cinderella couldn't wait. As she rushed down the steps of the castle, she lost one of her glass slippers. Still, she didn't stop. The prince told the grand duke he would marry the maiden whose foot fit the slipper. She was the girl of his dreams. Meanwhile, Cinderella was sitting by the side of the road. Everything had been changed back, but Cinderella still had a glass slipper, and memories of a magical night. It wasn't long before everyone knew the prince was looking for his mystery maiden. The Grand Duke was going from house to house to find her. The news made Cinderella happy, too happy for the stepmother's liking. So the stepmother locked Cinderella in her attic room. You can't keep me in here, please! Sobbed Cinderella. The stepmother put the key in her pocket. Jack and Gus wanted to help. They took the key from the stepmother. The two brave mice worked hard to bring the key up to Cinderella, but would they reach her in time? By now, the Grand Duke and a footman had arrived at Cinderella's house. Drizella tried on the slipper. When it didn't fit, she blamed the poor footman. Get away from me! She shouted. The slipper didn't fit Anastasia either. Are there any other ladies of the house? The Grand Duke asked, "There is no one else," replied Lady Tremaine. Just then, they heard Cinderella calling, "Your Grace, Your Grace!" The mice had freed Cinderella. The jealous stepmother didn't want to let Cinderella try on the slipper, so she tripped up the footman, and the slipper broke. Luckily, Cinderella had her other slipper in her pocket. The Grand Duke was delighted, and so was the Prince. He had found the girl of his dreams, but no one was happier than Cinderella. All of her dreams had come true. Cinderella and the Prince lived happily ever after. <laughs>